Hi, I'm Natalie Kynes and welcome to our Christmas edition of KG5 TV. We'll be showing you some of the highlights from the past couple of months, including Swimming Gala, the Hebe Haven 24-hour race, and Middle School Tug of War. All that and more in KG5 TV. Back in October, almost all the students at KG5 got to spend some time taking a step out of their comfort zones for the school's annual challenge week. A large number of these students got to travel to exotic locations, ranging anything from the volcanic black sand beaches of Iceland to spotting endangered species in Tanzania. Here's Toby Wong to tell us more about his trip to Fiji. Fiji Beyond Service is a challenge week trip led by Mr. Busbridge, Ms. Howe and Mr. Hooper. This challenge week trip, as mentioned in the name, is primarily service-based and students are able to engage in activities such as teaching local students, building toilets and repairing homes for families. Not only are students able to help the local community, they were also given the chance to relax with a natural hot spring and mud bath, swim in the beautiful beaches and to enjoy the stunning views Fiji has to offer. Each evening, students and staff will have the chance to work closely together to prepare and host an Indo-Fijian cultural night which allows students to fully immerse into the unique traditions of Fiji. Throughout the trip, students and teachers stayed at the Eco Lodge, a property owned and managed by Rustic Pathways, a group that has provided service opportunities in different places all over the world. This is Toby Wong from KG5 TV. The charity committee's annual sleepover took place again in October, with over 100 students attending. This year, their tremendous efforts definitely paid off, with over $11,000 being raised. Now to Clifton to tell us more. The KG5 Charity Sleepover is an annual event which aims to raise money to support various charities. The event itself was very lively and we decided to interview a member of the charity committee for a deeper insight into the event. For the Charity Sleepover, I had planned the activities and the things that we were going to do, a total plan of action of how the night was going to run, which charities we are supporting, which is Children's Cambodia Fund, Food Angel, and lifelong animal protection. Um, what we've done, we had to arrange different activities for the students to come enjoy, arrange movies, food for the morning, and different instructions that the students would follow. Did you enjoy your time helping or planning the sleepover? Yeah, I did, because it was very interactive with my team and the students. It was very well known what was had to be done, so I enjoyed working with the people. And Actually, it was very satisfying to see everything get done in such a way as we were working as one. So it was really good and I really enjoyed it. Do you think the students will enjoy it? I do believe that the students enjoy it as looking at it now, they seem like they are having lots of fun, the music, the interaction, the vibe, the atmosphere, I feel like it's all drawing them in and they're having a good time and because it's going to a good cause, it just makes it such a better thing to do. Over a hundred students attended the sleepover and have managed to raise around $11,000. This is Clifton Yip from KT5 TV, signing out. The middle school tug of war took place again in October, with all the middle school tutor groups gathering down at the field to support their houses. I went over to go find out more. The time has come yet again for middle school tug of war, a battle of strength and endurance to see which tutor group is worthy of winning the cup. All middle school tutor groups came down to the field to loyally cheer on their houses. We talked to tug of war captain Sanal Chandramani to find out more about the competition. So the middle school tug of war uh, is a competition um, between the middle school tutor groups and it, uh, it is a fun activity um, in the middle school and so all tutor groups get to participate in the heats and then whoever gets into the finals they compete against um, other houses so it's best of three usually. The competition this year went very uh, well because everybody was working well with each other and they were cooperating well and I think um, Crozier did really well um, and they managed to use good tug-of-war technique. This year was another great competition with CO2M claiming victory for the fourth time. This is Natalie Kynes for KG5 TV. Hevey Haven's 24-hour sailing race took place for its 14th time in a row with 22 teams overall competing. KG5's own team, led by Callum Gregor, ended up coming first. I went along to go find out more. Today we're here at the 24-hour charity dinghy race, a competition where participants sail around a course whilst raising money for charity. 
To gain a deeper understanding of the event, we talked to a race officer. So we're here with one of the race officers for this event, her name's Nicole. Um, can you tell us about what this event is for? Okay, so the 24 hour dinghy race is basically, it originally started to raise money for charity and to give the sailors, the young sailors here at Hebehaven the opportunity to do something a little different, to have a really fun race and to open up the club to the community. So how long has this event been running for? This is the 14th year that we've hosted this event. So I understand that you support charities every year, right? Yes. Which charities are being supported this year? I'm on the spot now. We have five charities. We have the Children's Cancer Foundation. We have Treats, which is social inclusion for children. We have Sailability, which is making sailing accessible to everybody. We have um, the Saikun Community Center, and we're giving them money towards a project for youth within Saikun and oh ideal so intellectually disabled adult education is the is the other one. So how many people are participating in the event this year? We have 22 teams um, in terms of participants I don't know what that will look like. <laughs> okay thank you for being interviewed. Sure. We're here with one of our sailors today Daniel PNT. Um, so how long have you been sailing? I've been sailing for exactly a year now. And what level are you? I am level two. What are the conditions like out there today? There's no wind at all. It's terrible. I hate it. How are you enjoying the 24 hour race? I'm loving it. Really am. Overall, the KG5 race team, led by Callum Greger, came first in the competition. Congratulations to all who participated and raised money for the cause. This is Natalie Kynes for KG5 TV. Our school also participated in a second 24-hour event, the annual pedal cart. Here's Sabrina to tell us more about the event. For 24 hours, six teams from KG5 will be participating in the annual pedal cart race in Victoria Park. Taking part since its beginning 30 years ago, KG5 has gone up against businesses like Cafe Pacific, Keiko, and the MTR, yet still remains the largest team. At the end of the day, it's a great way to have fun while raising money for charity. This is Sabrina Kynes from KG5 TV. KG5's annual swimming gala was another success, with students breaking new records and setting new standards. Despite getting rained out, kg 5 spirit shone through. Needless to say, the rain won't be missed. The time has come yet again for one of KG5's biggest and most anticipated events at Kowloon Sai Sporting Park, the annual swimming gala. The turnout this year has no doubt been great, with over 3,000 students coming to attend the event. The school takes part in supporting their houses, whether that's through cheering or swimming, in efforts to win the House Cup. Whether students are swimming breaststroke, backstroke, butterfly or freestyle, their enthusiasm for both their house and the sport was undeniable. Every year it seems that the cheerleading between the houses increases in both competitiveness as well as quality, and this year was no exception. Needless to say, it's been another great swimming gala at KG5. Although it's been one of the wettest swimming galas, the enthusiasm with the students never faltered. This is Natalie Kynes for KG5 TV. Thanks for tuning in again to KG5 TV. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you all again next year.